I moved to Denver in 1985. I was, I had just graduated from the Cleveland Institute of Music where I received my master's degree and studied with uh, principal percussionist and principal timpanist of the Cleveland Orchestra, Richard Wiener and Paul Janchich. I know, Richard Wiener. And uh, I came out to an audition in Denver in October of 1984. At the time, I was principal percussionist with the Toledo Symphony Orchestra, which was a position that I had won as a sophomore in college, uh, which I thought was a pretty nice part-time job. I came out to the audition in October of 84. There were about 100 percussionists there, and I was, I was the lucky winner, uh, which I'm so grateful for. I uh, couldn't be happier living in Denver. At the time, it was the Denver Symphony Orchestra, and it sort of morphed into the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. And there are still quite a few colleagues there from when I started, but it's mostly a bunch of new, young, fresh faces that are a great addition to the orchestra. Um, one of my colleagues in the Colorado Symphony, Ted Small, who passed a few years ago. When I got in the orchestra, he was the percussion faculty at the University of Denver Mont School of Music. And he was sort of going through some changes and was giving up his position. So I asked him if he would mind if I applied for it. And of course he said that he'd be happy if I was able to get that job. So I've been at Lamont since uh, 1998. I do have a teaching philosophy and it sort of goes along with my parenting philosophy which is love and logic. The way I approach my students is that if you're going to be a musician you have to be incredibly passionate about what you want to do. And If you don't have that innate passion it doesn't really matter how talented you are you're not going to make a living in music. So it's nice to have kids that are talented and, and that are also smart which is what University of Denver actually attracts. But if you don't have that passion, it's not something that I can make you do. So with Love and Logic as a parent, you teach your kids to make good choices. And if they make bad choices, then there's a consequence. So with my students at Lamont, if my student comes in and hasn't prepared for their lesson, it's really no skin off my back. I still, I still get paid the same. I still have the same passion. So basically, I, I want the environment to be positive and encouraging and hard in a way to have students understand that you have to work really hard to be able to make a living in music. And what we've established in the Lamont Percussion Studio really is a culture of excellence where everybody works hard, everybody gets along, and it's competitive, but it's a very positive, competitive atmosphere. It's not cutthroat where I'm gonna do better than you, but it's like, hey, I'm better than you, but come on, step it up. Well, this coming year, I'm going to have uh, five undergraduates and four graduates. I have a GTA, a graduate te teaching assistant, who's doing a double major in percussion and musicology. I also have an artist diploma student who's considered uh, a graduate student. And I usually like to have a pretty good balance. I would prefer to have six undergraduates and four graduates, but I'm one short on undergraduates this year. Okay, so as a percussion student at Lamont, you have the opportunity to play in either the Lamont Orchestra or the Lamont Wind Ensemble, and that's determined by an audition. There's an audition at the beginning of each quarter for ensemble placement. Uh, the first quarter in, in uh, September, 
is that I allow the students to choose whatever they want. So it gives them an opportunity to sort of show off like, I feel like I'm a really good timpanist, so I'm gonna play some timpani solos and a snare drum solo and a marimba solo. During this winter and spring quarter, everybody plays the same. It's like an orchestral audition, which is behind the screen and it's orchestral excerpts. And each of those usually takes about 10 minutes. And so that's the large ensembles for we also have a Lamont percussion ensemble, which meets twice a week. And that's about, that's about three hours a week of rehearsal. So since we're on the quarter system, we do three Lamont percussion ensemble concerts, one each quarter. We also do a Lamont ragtime ensemble concert in the winter quarter. And we do a percussion studio showcase concert which gives students the opportunity to do uh, solos, duets, trios, and Hamilton Recital Hall. So it's kind of like a recital for the whole studio. Now during percussion ensemble we also have performance class usually three times a quarter where the students get to play for each other and it doesn't mean that you have to prepare an entire box sonata to play. It's just get up and perform for your colleagues at wherever you're at. Like you only know half of the Chaconne, great, get up and play the Chaconne because that's really the hardest performance you're going to have is to play for your colleagues who can tell what you're doing. And that's really a great opportunity to get feedback from your colleagues and also for you to give your feedback to each other. And I really encourage my students to play for each other all the time, record yourselves all the time, because that's really the way you're going to improve the most. So uh, percussion students, they'll each have a lesson with me each week for an hour. They also have opportunity to study with Mike Marlier, the drum set teacher, or Tom Miller, who runs the steel pan band so he gives pan lessons and also hand percussion lessons on conga, bongos, timbales, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's a requirement and then if you're in the Lamont Symphony Orchestra that rehearses twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays or if you're in the Lamont Wind Ensemble that also rehearses twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So uh, a lot of time, you, you'll actually have a lot of time to practice at Lamont. We have five percussion rooms that are available. So this year for nine students, that's pretty good odds that you're going to be able to get in and have a room that you can practice on. Plus there are also multiple large rooms very close to the percussion studio that if it's, if it's empty, you can just push a marimba down the hall and get into the choral room which has fantastic acoustics and I would like to steal that from them but I don't think I can. So there, there's opportunity to practice uh, in multiple rooms within the school. Well, Lamont Percussion Studio is, uh, I'm, I think I can say, probably one of the strongest studios in the school. My students do really well nationally. Uh, they've won the chamber music competition at PASIC. One of my sophomores was invited to participate in the all-star percussion ensemble at PASIC. My students often get in the top summer music festivals, uh, which I, I, I can't require, but I highly encourage the students to participate. In that, one of my former students is now my colleague in the Colorado Symphony. He won a section percussion job. So I think that the atmosphere, the attitude, the encouragement, the fact of the incredible instruments and the facility make it a great place to come and learn how to be a percussionist and make a living in music in whatever area you would like to pursue.